So I'm Andrew, here's a nice picture of me with a suit in my garden in North Holland. If you want to speak to me, speak to me on LinkedIn. I'm not on Twitter very much, and I'm actually the CTO of Lenses. Hi everyone, I'm Jeremy from Babylon Health. Uh, I'm a data operation engineer in our platform engineering team. Okay, so if you don't know who Lenses is, what we do, basically we do data ops, but contrary to a lot of the other talks, we focus more on real-time data integration, namely doing data ops on a streaming platform such as Kafka. So we have a, a large footprint in the open source community for Kafka. So we have connectors there, we have dockers, we have UIs. We also have an enterprise offering, which is lenses. Uh, we have quite a lot of customers. Uh, this is just some of them, right? So they range from startups to established multinational companies and also unicorn tech companies such as Babylon. So data, data's everywhere. I'm not gonna lecture you about data because you're here, right? But the, the key point I want to make is that data is the protagonist, right? Technology, not so much, right? It's all about the data, whether it's big data, small data, fast data, doesn't matter. It's always data, but there is a problem. And I've seen this in my career as well. So let me ask you, are you in production, right? How fast did you get to production? And have you actually made it, right? Because a lot of people don't make it. I've seen this. I haven't made it to production in my career. Gardner also say this. This is quite a frightening statistic. First of all, in 2006, they said it was 60% of projects fail. Now it's 85%. When I was a civil engineer, yeah, sure, we went over budget, right? But we still delivered. Why does the tech industry accept failure? It's quite shocking. So why do they fail? Well, there's lots of reasons, but one of them is the fact that distributed computing is pretty hard, right? You spend a lot of time using open source technology, building out a platform, trying to monitor it, trying to apply governance, trying to apply, apply everything you need to make a data platform applicable to an enterprise organization. And you also need to find everyone who can operate this. So you need to go out and find these mythical big data developers, fast data developers, who have a lot of skills. This leads to a next problem. And I've seen this. These guys don't know your data. I'll give you an example. I used to work at an investment bank, and we had to take data out of Oracle, put it into Kafka with Spark. I came along with my nice high day rate and my 50 other Scala developers, Six million dollars later, we failed. And we had all these business analysts, all these Oracle DBAs sitting there going, you can't join that data with this data. We lacked the data context. So it's all about skills as well. So what we want to do is we want to focus on what matters. And to us, this means data ops, not technology. Technology is an enabler. Technology is a commodity. We want to build out your data intensity. But wait, aren't we all meant to be tech companies? We have lots of organizations running around going, we're a software shop that also provides another service. I disagree, right? I actually really disagree with this. You are providing a service, whether that's a financial service, healthcare, data, uh, energy provider, it doesn't matter. But you are using technology to provide that service. You are not a software shop that's decided it's gonna go off and do finance for a lot of companies. I see this, especially from my background in the financial industry. <clears throat> and we also have other people saying this as well, right? So tech intensity. Microsoft were talking about this last week at MS Ignite. In fact, their CEO was also talking about it. You wanna speed up adoption Give access to everybody in your organization to commoditize technology. Technology is just a commodity, right? Use that commodity to focus on your main driver that is, could be healthcare, it could be 
finance, it doesn't matter. So technology really is a commodity. I can go to any one of these cloud providers now, click, 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 I can get a managed Kafka. Click, 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 I can get a managed Kubernetes. I can get a managed data service. It could be a database, key value store. I also need things like um, key vaults because I need to manage my password securely as well. I can get everything to actually focus back on what's important, which is your data and your business, your IP. So at Lenses, when we talk about data ops, what we actually talk about is three different pillars. If you want to have a successful platform, you need to have self-service, right? Because you want all your stakeholders on board. You also need to give them visibility on that data as it's moving through the pipes in real time. But you also need to have governance around that as well. It's no use opening up your awesome platform to a, an organization that has to meet strict compliance reporting. <coughs> and also you want to be able to build these flows quickly and easily and not necessarily rely on all these mythical rock star developers that you can't hire and retain in the first place. So we provide data ops on top of a real time streaming platform. So what does this platform look like? Well, from an architect's point of view, it looks like this, right? We have a data source. We're pumping all that data into Kafka, maybe pumping it into Pulsar, probably better than Kafka, or maybe into Redis Streams. It doesn't matter. And then we're piping that data out into a data store, whatever that could be. And then we have our rock star developers beavering away, producing all these applications to work on our data in real time. And we might have Kubernetes in there as well, because we're cool. Docker, we have everything, our CI CD pipelines looking awesome. So your architect does this, then he shuts down his PowerPoint and he goes and has a cup of coffee. And then you try and actually get your users on board and what do they see? This is what they see, right? Don't give your users the black box. If you want to scale and have a platform to go across a large organization, you can't give them the command line, right? Try giving this to the head of market risk at a tier one investment bank. You'll never have that conversation again, I can guarantee you, right? The terminal, command line, it's still a black box. So what you want to do is you want to provide visibility, and that's where we come in. You want to provide people access to the data in a way that is familiar to them, browser-based so they can explore that data their vital data, then they can debug it as it's flowing through their system. You also want to make sure they can do it with a skill that's uh, familiar to them, such as SQL, right? You also need to give them a way to integrate data because it doesn't matter, big data, small data, people are still moving data around and they always will. I was doing it 20 years ago. You also need to give them a way to easily transform data, again, with a skill that they know, right? Because it doesn't matter if you've got a nice AI model or machine learning model, unless you're getting good quality data into it, so you need to deploy something that does the, the filtering, the aggregations, the joining of data, and have that deployed and monitored real time. You also need to scale this right. So Kubernetes is um, very popular. So you want to be able to make sure that you deploy your applications out into Kubernetes and also deploy it in a nice manner. Again, if you're going to ask somebody at an organization to edit a Kubernetes manifest in Vim, that's not going to go down very well, actually. So you want to make sure that you can deploy things easily. And you want to provide self-service. So you have this wonderful Kafka pipe, or it could be Apache Pulse or Redis Streams. You want to make sure that you can control everything on top of that. And you want to make sure everything has an API, right? And you also then want to wrap governance around it. So how do you put governance around something like Kafka? We do it with virtual namespaces so you can scale it out to an enterprise level and achieve multi-tenancy. Because what you're actually trying to build is your application landscape. That is the important bit. Kafka, Pulsar, Databases doesn't matter, they're just sitting there burning money until you actually put something on top of it. 
all this is just an engine underneath, right? Your application landscape's the important bit and you want to pick the appropriate engine for your use case on whatever cloud you want. You also want to make sure that we bring all the best practices from DevOps, right? We want to make sure everything's repeatable. How do I take this awesome flow that I've built and all my data scientists have built in dev and move it into production? You want to take a GitHub approach and you can do that using all the APIs that we have and make repeatable flows into production. So, to summarize, for me, technology, even as a CTO, it's a bit of a hard thing to say, technology is just an enabler, right? What you want to focus on is building your data intensity, because it's all about the data, the data is the protagonist. Because at the end of the day, there's nothing more important than your health, right? And I'd like to hand over then to Jeremy from Babylon Health. Thank you. <clears throat> so, um, everyone can hear me okay? Yeah? Cool. So I couldn't agree more. Um, I want to tell you a story of my company, how we managed to scale what was two years ago, a small startup of 100 people, to now one of the healthcare unicorns, London-based. So for those who are here today who don't know about Babylon, uh, we are on a mission. We believe it's possible to give an accessible and affordable healthcare to anyone on Earth. And how do we do that? So we build three layers of services, physical services, so talking to a GP at uh, one of our Babylon GP practice, virtual services, talking to a GP during a consultation on uh, our Babylon app, and AI services. So that completes all of our cycle of care and the AI services are helping you uh, with our Babylon app to manage and track your health better. Now, we made that possible in the UK, in Rwanda, in 12 countries in Southeast Asia, going to Canada and the US, and a lot more next year. <clears throat> to give you an example, in the UK, today represents around 50,000 new members every month, and that translates into 80,000 new chatbot conversations every month. Uh, if, if, you've been, uh, if you live in the UK and you've been trying to book a GP lately, you know it's a struggle. You know it takes an average two weeks to get a GP appointment. So how did we achieve that? Well, obviously we are trying to revolutionize healthcare with AI. If we think about a classic user journey, uh, or the journey of a patient at Babylon, they could use our chatbot to describe their symptom and get triaged, maybe get an appointment with one of our GPs on their phone. During this consultation with our GP, some notes are going to be generated automatically, maybe some prescriptions as well. Our patients could use Monitor, our new feature, to track their health better, and we also extract a lot of data from the health record. So all of those different services here are generating a lot of domain events uh, live, thousands of them a second, and we need to be able to aggregate, filter, and anonymize those data streams to build better AI, better insights for our business, but also better model and better security for our patients. So the vision at Babylon is to be able to, you know, uh, deliver this affordable and accessible healthcare every, everywhere by packaging this stack and printing it bringing, it, bringing it with us in any region we need to operate. How did we do that? We worked on a platform as a service for our engineers, for data engineers, software engineers, to deploy on a seamless layer. So building from the cloud infrastructure and our basic data infrastructure, we invested on an orchestration layer that abstracts the deployment uh, and uh, the management of, well, microservices, data processors, and all of our tools and automation. The way it looks today, we have a cloud agnostic uh, platform. We invested a lot on Kubernetes, so everything at Babylon is deployed, is running in a Docker container on Kubernetes. It could be microservices, it could be our Kafka streams, processors, and tools such as Lenses. On the data infrastructure side, well, just to name a few, we made a choice to use Kafka, Kafka Connect, and Kafka Streams. Uh, we rely heavily on BigQuery for data lake and data warehousing solutions, and an example of ETLing would be on, on Airflow. So here, what it means is that we are able, any engineer at Babylon now, is able to develop, test, and deploy to any environment, any of our, our, all of the regions I just mentioned earlier, seamlessly with the same guidelines several times, uh, several times uh, a day. 
Now, how do you enable uh, people who work on data products to access data and data infrastructure as fast as our developers do? On top of this platform as a service I just uh, talked about, our data teams built our Babylon data platform. So if you think about the different type of <coughs> sorry, data sources that we deal with uh, in a healthcare environment, so our microservices, more than 200 of them today, generating health events, uh, thousands of them a second. We obviously have a legacy monolith backed by an online database, and maybe some external data sources we need to uh, gather data from. Well, all of those are generating domain events that we need to aggregate, we need to pull through our data integration platform, and we picked Kafka to be the data backbone at Babylon, the real nervous system of our data platform. Now, the data integration platform is the, the one beating heart of, of this data platform. It's actually the one giving us a few guarantees such as security, um, with encryption, with anonymization of the data, and with the formatting of the data. So being able to join all of those streams of data live and decouple the the public, the publish side and the consume side of, of our data platform. At the back of it, you can imagine the classic uh, data lake and data warehousing stack that you, you heard about many times in the last two days, delivering uh, insights or uh, better data sets for our AI research platform or our data bazaar, which is our data catalog and data access management tool. So the, the goal of DataOps at Babylon was really to bring all of those different personas developing this platform together, they have different needs, but they all use um, the, the platform in, in, a, in, in the same way. And from the different personas, software engineer, data engineer, or data analyst, they, they all need DataOps to, at some point, to help them accelerate the development of data products. So we saw a few challenges while building this platform, um, and it was mostly about the type of industry we are evolving in, healthcare, uh, it actually means that our, the type of data we are dealing with is most of the time containing personally ident identifiable data, so patient data that need to be protected. You can think about data ownership and GDPR as another challenge uh, because you always need to be able to retrieve or uh, delete data for our users. The type of the, the company itself was a challenge. Uh, as I explained, growing from a small startup to what is now a unicorn was challenging. The number of use cases is growing every week. The throughput also is very different from day one. So we had to build a platform that was uh, scalable and flexible enough. We've seen, like uh, most of you here, uh, some, some challenges in terms of data quality and observability was a, a, a key uh, a key feature here for all of our data engineers to be able to debug and see the data in, in their vertical, in their uh, business domain. If there's any Kafka operator in the room, you know that Kafka itself is also a challenge. Uh, so I will explain later how we, we also uh, use lenses for that. And I think for me that the biggest challenge is maintaining, you know, governance and security is first in healthcare, uh, but without slowing innovation at Babylon. And that was key in the last two years to actually grow as fast as we did. So what did that have did um, at Babylon? Uh, historically, it was a small team focusing on building our very first data infrastructure. I mentioned Kafka, Kafka Connect, Kafka Streams, the, the whole environment around that. We then started thinking about a wrapper around it to abstract the access to data and uh, the creation of processes for our, our developers. So as I explained earlier, we are deploying everything on Docker on Kubernetes, meaning that all of our developers, uh, all of our services, all of our uh, tools are actually built and deployed the same way. So we've been stealing a lot of the best practices and the tools coming from the DevOps culture and the, our platform engineering team. An example of it is uh, Shipcat. So it's an open source tool developed at Babylon. You can go online on GitHub and check it out. Um, it's basically a way to abstract and, and help our developers to de develop their services and their different configuration of service uh, backend uh, all the way you know, down their stack with a very basic YAML definition, very basic YAML uh, manifest that will be translated live into Kubernetes file or Helm chart. We invested a lot as well in observability and to help with data quality tracking. And the key here is really empower all of our engineers at Babylon with the right level of governance all the way. So I, as I said, stealing a bit of the best practices from, uh, from DevOps and our, our SSDLC, which is guaranteeing that everything that goes up the stack to production is actually secure. Same with our tools. 
So an example of a tool we've been deploying on this stack is Lensys. So what is Lensys doing for Babylon? Remember this diagram of our data platform? Well, Lensys is helping us basically zoom onto the, the integration and ingestion part, which is mostly Kafka, Kafka streams today. Today at Babylon, we have over 90 engineers, data engineers or software engineers, using uh, Lensys to explore their topics, to debug their pipelines, maybe to experiment and deploy live some new processors thanks to Lensys. And we manage all of those users uh, in a secure way thanks to the airbag system in Lensys, meaning that team A that works on project A can actually manage all of their stack, their service, but also their consumers, their topics, their configuration freely in development environments without impacting team B, basically. Um, Something that really helped with Lensys is the, the support of custom serializer, deserializer, which means that you know, by, de by definition, uh, in healthcare, all of our data in our, in our streams are encrypted and serialized. Um, but it doesn't help for QA or for experimenting or debugging. So today, our engineers are able to see the real payload in development environment and be able to query live per field. We use Protobuf for the schema to do that. I just want to mention one last thing is that Lensys is helping us operate our clusters, which was a big, it was a big deal as we, we grew and we deployed Kafka in all of our regions. But how did we deploy Lensys? Well, I just mentioned we are a big Kubernetes house. Uh, guess what? Lensys was coming out of the box with a hem chart that was very, very easy for us to deploy it on one of our AWS EKS cluster. So I really recommend it. I just want to talk about what's next and what's our vision for DataOps at Babylon. Uh, you hear a lot of people talking about DataOps here, especially on the analytics side. We, tr we decided to focus on the integration and ingestion part uh, at the moment. And personally, I, I don't see DataOps as a team at Babylon, but more as a chapter. Uh, we see the same kind of need all across the business. So in the future, I think we, we will bring up a new profile, a new function at Babylon uh, in this data reliability engineer that could be spread across our business in different squads working on the development of data products. We're going to invest a lot also on data discovery. Uh, we've seen a few people uh, like IBM with their, their project, uh, Geria, uh, Amundsen as well. We, there's a definite need for better access to data, make all of our data streams and data sets by definition um, discoverable, and then manage, uh, finally manage the, the authorization on top of that. We're going to keep on investing on uh, self-service uh, infrastructure and tools. That means uh, on Kubernetes, at least, we're going to work more using CRDs and custom operator to automate, to really automate ourselves out of the job and let all of our engineers uh, freely develop in development environment their service and their, their infrastructure. Finally, better observability for us means um, we've been good at developing uh, the metrics and the, the alerting, the thresholds for basic uh, data pipelining, data processing. But I think we, we think you know following the data mesh idea, we think we actually should push it back to the the people who who own the, um, the business domain basically in each of the verticals and let them following a, a framework we define, let them build their own uh, observability, their own alerts on, on the business side, not on the system side. As we said, it's only a community after all. One last thing. Um, we are also thinking, since we want to focus on delivering uh, value for our business, not on the plumbing underneath, more and more we are thinking about bringing uh, our data infrastructure on top of Kubernetes. Here the idea is simple. It's, it gets easier and easier for us to package it and take it with us in the different regions where we operate, where we might not find some cloud providers or the environment uh, could, be, could be different. And that's it for me. Yeah. Thank you. There you go. I just want to say we are hiring as well, right? So you can go to our web page. So from technical to business side, and we have a, a box as well. You can download it, you can get going with lenses and have a play around with it. And we are at a booth over there. I can't remember the number, but if you want to have a chat further, I'm quite happy to talk why data should be the focus rather than technology. Thank you.